you said Gen Z well surprised and then you put full stop and I was like cool yeah, <laughs> yeah. not telling you anymore I was like what does he mean yeah, Let, let's yeah. let's go with the flow of that what 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 is this so you know I get quite a few notifications and spend a bit of time on on X during mm-hmm. during the evening most of the time because the US are open yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> Now it all makes sense. I'm always like, why is he so active in the evening? <laughs> now, US. In the US. <laughs> Absolutely. They're very active it's on that. It's taken me that long to realise. We, we, we know you have to take a lot of that stuff with a pinch of salt. But um, this this really grabbed me, particularly because obviously uh, why we built Fint and, and kind of the reasons for it and the demographic we're, we're looking to launch this with. But um, it's from uh, Jeremy Hopdahl. I've definitely pronounced that incorrectly, but <laughs> hey ho. Um, on, on his, on his, That's uh, on you, on his, that yeah, one. Yeah, it's definitely on me, on his X feed. <laughs> but it's, it's generational wealth per capita. Uh, and what it's really, uh, it's got kind of three generations. So baby boomers, mm-hmm. which is kind of where the world kind of accepts most of the, app, the, cap, the wealth is mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. Uh, Gen X, which I kind of slip into, I think. Uh, millennials and Gen Z combined. And this is an amazing stat. So at, at, at the at those three kind of cohorts, yep. at the age of 30, currently, millennials and Gen Z are ahead of Gen X and baby boomer, boomers in terms of their inflation-adjusted wealth. Okay, so, so the, the amount of money that they've got at the age of 30, yeah. each, each generation kind of are lapping on top of each other. Correct. What do you think that is then? Um, it's, well, why? I, it's fascinating. Uh, I didn't think that was the case. Being being really honest, what did um, what did you personally think? I thought I, I assumed baby boomers. I just assumed that they carry the wealth. They've you know they've um, they're better at saving. Yeah, they, and and that age group and that generation have have, have been good savers historically. So but I just assumed they would have more. Is that because they save better because they've had less? So they've saved better throughout their lives. So they've got more in the end. Whereas the younger generation maybe have the opportunity to make more money quicker yeah. so they can get to a high net worth, say, younger towards 30, but then are actually like, okay, I haven't saved my money. I've now got a car lease, a good yeah. sized mortgage, yeah. or I'm renting somewhere in a very nice area that I can't really afford for the rest of my life if I don't, if I stop working tomorrow. Yeah. So you're sort Just, of saying people are wanting to be more better with their money and actually try and invest or try and do things but they just don't have the education no i no, it's not no i think out. i think the opportunity for businesses and more job opportunities are there that earn more money correct mm. yeah i th- think that's it i think personally. access is a huge load yeah. loads better i'm not saying that they save no mm. i'm, I'm saying wealthier. that they're wealthier yeah, i'm saying yeah. that yeah. that doesn't mean in 20 years time they're yeah. not going to be it, the it, same situation the same, i would love yeah. to see yeah. that that yeah. graph being like okay this is at 30. Absolutely. 40, yeah. 50. Yeah. Because I yeah. bet you when it gets to 60, it's going to be like you'd have two different yeah, yeah. perspectives. There was that TV program. I can't remember the name of it, but they followed uh, a uh, generation from uh, the seven. I think it was my, my generation. They were born in the 70s. They did video, uh, d- interviewed them age 5, yeah, yeah. 15, 20, 30, 40, or something like that. Uh, it'd be fascinating to see how this kind of pans out and whether they manage to stay ahead of the boomers or fall behind the boomers uh, obviously hope we can make a difference with them, but yeah but I, th- I think the boomers are in a situation where like you kind of see that report being like okay i bought a house at this age and it was at this price and now the value of it's at this price yeah. so yes you may your net worth may be much higher because yeah. physical assets improved yeah. a lot more like your house has now gone 10x absolutely yeah yeah but that's not money that you can and, use and is it it's like it's there locked up correct and there is a there is a um, also the habits of of that generation and that demographic they're so good at saving and building wealth yeah that actually that's the habit they have they don't have the spending habit as much so therefore their wealth kind of sticks around yeah they don't go for dinner every single night they'll go once a month to yeah. somewhere nice or so, well in the uk it's more that way whereas in america it'd be more like probably maybe, once, yeah. once every other day sort of thing <laughs> probably smart with money too I yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. But on the back of that, this and this is kind of the challenge you have with with this generation. Obviously, again, something we know with what we're building with uh, with Fint. Uh, and this was a um, I don't know where this this was on X, but I, I didn't see the source. Um, and it's a, a, a screen print from a, an article. Um, one of the fastest growing types of content on TikTok has been financial advice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll put that in the video. Saw that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, did you see this? Yeah. So much of it aimed at and created by young users seeking to tap into the Gen Z obsession with financial independence, retire early, um, fire. Um, horrible. Um, and obviously we, we know, we, we spoke about this in the genesis of, of Fint in terms of the energy and the amazing things. 
but um, from stocks, blah, blah, blah. A uh, report by Wall Street Zen, a stock market uh, analysis tool, I missed out a swear word, examining the validity of financial advice on TikTok found that 95% of the content carries no disclaimers about investment risk. I, pres- I would say it's even higher than that, to be oh, honest, from, from what I've seen. I've yeah, never seen one with a disclaimer. disclaimer. No, unless never. it's from a uh, an established kind of actual firm. account yeah, yeah absolutely yeah, yeah. and then, does, and then doesn't flick off it. it doesn't fall into this yeah because <laughs> if you've got a professional person like yeah. filmed on like a, a, a thirty thousand pound filming day walking out the shop from m s yeah. with a bag it's like you know well, that doesn't relate to me so yeah, yeah exactly like, yeah gone. quite well this is the scariest bit nearly a quarter of it uh, of the videos imply guaranteed returns on investments which cannot be guaranteed that's scary isn't it and that is so true. Looking through all social media platforms now, and that is what the younger generation, I think, is falling into the trap of not having the actual knowledge and yeah. just thinking, we can get rich quick. Everyone can this do it. This guy has. These guys yeah. are saying it's yeah. possible. It's 100% possible. If I invest my money with these, I'm going to be rich. Yeah, it's, and it isn't the no, case. No, it's fine. And you see, you know, they'll, they'll purport something, push something out there, and then they'll, you know, they'll do the next video on holiday because they don't yeah. have to work. And it's... You know, I and the person that's putting these videos out sometimes is making money because they'll say, come follow us or do these things. Quite. And then they're yeah. just getting yeah. paid. And they're selling things on the back of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. most of them sort of scenarios are, it's, oh, join the affiliate program or pay for the course of the, yeah. there's always something behind it. It's like, yeah. Yeah. how are you actually making money? Uh, have you gone and got a job? Are you investing within the market? Or are you making your money off me hopefully buying yeah. your product? And yeah. that's one yeah. thing that I always think, even like not even the financial market the the mentality of i don't i disagree with this slightly like oh i need to retire and set everybody up yes yeah, set everybody up but no i don't ever want to retire yeah, I, exactly. I quite mm, enjoy yeah, working yeah, yeah and if you're yeah. putting your heart and soul on something like i think one thing from our point of view is seeing with influencers like that the kardashians you've kind of got skims or you've got kylie's yeah, cosmetics or thing. they've yeah, put yeah. their heart and soul into it you may like them you may not like them but you can't disagree that the product that they produce it's authentic to who they are and yeah, what they yeah. do. And that's like, their passion is there. Absolutely. And I think that's really important. Whereas a lot of these people we see online, it's like the, the creating the content, the, the passion's not there, the longevity's not there. It's, it's something like, it's a short term thing. Like we came to that first stat, they may have got money up to the age of 30, but then what do they do They're after that? They're trying to achieve following. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. By, by you know, saying something. Or make a traction. statement, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah, correct, yeah. So that's, a, that's the, obviously the sense of the problem that obviously we're, 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 tr- we're trying to solve. But it, again, that the, the stat of, of uh, Gen Z and millennials being ahead already blew me away. And then, but coupled with the world that they are now in. It's, well, uh, we're it's Gen Z. Are we Gen Z? Are we Gen Z? When does Gen Z start? When's it finished? I'm 96. I think it's at the end of it. Just at the end of it. Just. Yeah. 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 Just. Not that you fall out of it. Yeah. I'm falling out of it. I think you're definitely, definitely Gen Z. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Just. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> in that roughly age, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's so confusing. What time do you get your first phone? Come. What age did you get your first phone? There we go. That'll probably tick the box. Two thousand and seven, I think it was. To be fair, if we yes. were talking about it last yeah, uh, last week episode, yeah, the yeah, iPhone. Yeah, yeah. I got my yeah. dad's first I iPhone. Just, I know it was a, after that. a solid oh, Nokia yeah. Yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. So I wasn't an iPhone. Yeah. You, you weren't. A, you weren't an adult and working. So yeah, yeah. you're Gen Z. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, words. Yeah, exactly. That's very cool. No, it, it, it's crazy on the side of like having so much more disposable income and, and even like you see it with LVMH and like that money that's driving into that market is mm. like you go to a shop and you realize, well, how much maybe big ticket items are being sold? Well, yeah. not as many as you realize, but how many belts, how many wallets, how yeah, many like course. the items that you can just about afford if yeah. you've got not a lot of money, but actually why are you buying it for no good reason? Point, actually. I, and, and thinking about it, uh, of that that the that younger younger adult generation now, if you think globally, obviously growing middle classes mm. in like China in particular yeah. and emerging markets in general, you've got a, an expanding population, but a growing yeah. wealthier middle class um, population. Therefore, that wealth will will, will, will what, trickle down. What are your thoughts, Wes, on things like Klarna? Things like this for the younger yeah. generations, mm-hmm. like um, the fact that they can now buy more expensive things on a monthly yeah. basis. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Th- what are your thoughts on it? Dangerous, scary, good for the environment, good for the. Yeah, I, I, I think it's. I, I, I think it creates the wrong kind of habits. Mm-hmm. Again, if you're comparing boomers, yeah, uh, um, that bo- the, the boomer generation, yeah. and again, they save up and then buy outright. I, I own it. It's mine. it. 
if I can't yeah. afford it, I'll save up and I'll buy it when I can afford I'm it. I'm in that mentality. Yeah, yeah. And I, think, I, I think it, try I think and stay away from let's me. Let's face it, it's yeah. the best mentality to have. Yeah. Um, the, the other side of that, it, you know, things like Klarna, when the, you can do things over three months, doesn't cost you anything to do it. And it's something that would make a difference. Like, for example, if you go, you've got a new job, uh, and you need to travel there, you need to get there, but you can yeah. buy something that helps you get there or, or a piece of equipment, then maybe it's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. But not, um, not for a hundred quid t-shirt. But, but the, yeah, or, exactly. Like, like you're buying problem. your, yeah, exactly. but it's even like, what, yeah. like you can get on items now, like yeah. 20, 30 quid. Oh, like, anything. I, I think it's everything yeah. pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I find it interesting because the company that what Klarna in this case, like yeah. they buy the debt, don't they? Yes, that's and right. And then yeah. their company that's had the t-shirt or the pen or whatever you, yeah. they get paid in they full paid away. and then they take the debt. Yeah, so it's like, you're just yeah. building up that. Yeah. In, yeah. It's a hell of a business model. It is a well, hell of a business Berkshire model. Berkshire Hathaway, yeah. like credit card yeah. is factoring. The, the kind of premiums. underlying, yeah. not that's shouted about, like yeah. that's where they make all their yeah. real money. Well, yeah, I mean, Berkshire Hathaway originally, it's, it's insurance premiums. Yeah. And that's why they have yeah. to invest it. That's why they will always have that trickle of insurance premiums. It's a, a sim similar thing, but the Klarna thing, yeah, it works. It's a business model. Uh, they take their fee, pay the uh, pay the vendor. Vendor gets their money. They've sold their product. They're happy, and then it's between Klarna and the um, and the individual, the it's consumer, to make sure they pay. 